Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at evaluating trig limits. So we have evaluate the following limits and we're going to do three examples. But first we have the limit is h goes to zero, sine 2h times sine 5h over h squared. Now we're going to use this formula here, the limit is theta goes to zero, sine theta over theta equals one. And the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this as a product of two fractions. We're going to say this is sine 2h over h times sine 5h over h. And we know we did this correct because if we multiply these two fractions together, it's going to bring us right back here. Now the reason why we do this is we need to generate a match between the sine function and its denominator. So notice here, this one says 2h, so we need this denominator to say 2h as well. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by 2 over 2. And we do something similar for the second fraction. We're going to multiply by 5 over 5. So what this accomplishes, when we look at this, we're going to highlight this portion here, and we could also highlight this portion here. The reason being, the green part that we have boxed off is going to go to 1 as the limit as h approaches 0 for this problem here. So when we simplify this, this is 2 times, and this part here by our formula is going to go to 1 times the 5 times, and this green part also is going to go to 1. So our answer to the first problem, the limit as h goes to 0 of our function here equals 2 times 1 times 5 times 1, which is equal to 10. Okay, for the second problem, we have the limit as x goes to 0 of cosecant 10x over cosecant 5x. So for this problem here, what we want to do is we're going to use the definition of cosecant, that is the reciprocal of sine. And we can rewrite this now as the limit as x approaches 0, and we're going to have sine 5x over sine 10x. So basically, if we send this expression down to the denominator, we're taking the reciprocal, and we could call it sine, and we're going to send cosecant 5x in the denominator up, and it'll become sine 5x. Now the next part here, we're going to write this as the limit as x approaches 0, and what we want to do is we're going to call this sine 5x over 1, and we're going to call the denominator sine 10x over 1 because we want to use this formula again. And remember, to use it, we need to have a match between the numerator and denominator. So for this first part here, we need this denominator to say 5x. So with the top part, we're going to multiply by 5x over 5x. And notice here, we have this expression, sine theta over theta. We have a match between our numerator and denominator. And by the same reasoning, we're going to multiply the bottom fraction by 10x over 10x. Because what this accomplishes, now we could section off this part here. This limit in green for both parts is going to go to 1 because we have a match now. So to simplify this limit, this is now the limit as x approaches 0, and we could think of this part here as basically canceling out. But we're going to be left with 5x over 10x for these two remaining terms here. And this is times the limit as x approaches 0, and we'll have sine 5x over 5x, all over sine 10x over 10x. So to simplify here, notice the x over x cancels, and this is going to give us 5 over 10 times, and the limit as x goes to 0, sine 5x over 5x goes to 1, and sine 10x over 10x by our formula here also goes to 1. And 5 over 10 reduces to 1 half. So our answer to the second problem, the limit as x goes to 0 of our function here should equal 1 half. So for the last problem here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine 2x over sine squared 3x. For this example here, if we try plugging in 0, we're going to get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So what we want to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So we're going to multiply by 1 plus cosine 2x over 1 plus cosine 2x. Now what this accomplishes, we could rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0, and we use the difference of two squares concept here. 1 times 1 
is 1, and we have minus cosine 2x times cosine 2x is cosine squared 2x. And this is over sine squared 3x times 1 plus cosine 2x. But notice the numerator here. We could use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if we rearrange this formula here, we could replace our numerator with sine squared theta, where theta in this case is 2x. So we can make a substitution now and call this the limit as x approaches 0, and we'll have sine squared 2x over sine squared 3x times 1 plus cosine 2x. And what we want to do next is we're going to write this as a string of a few fractions. So we're going to write this as the limit as x approaches 0. And now we could call this sine 2x over sine 3x times sine 2x over another sine 3x. And then we have this last part here, times 1 over, and we have 1 plus cosine 2x. Now from the previous problem, we know this limit here is going to simplify to 2 thirds. This limit will simplify to 2 thirds. And for the last limit, we could just plug in x is equal to 0. So to close this problem out now, once again, this is the logic we used in question 2. This limit is going to simplify to 2 thirds. The second part here is going to simplify to 2 thirds. And then the last part is going to be 1 over we'll have 1 plus cosine of 0. When we plug in x equals 0 for this last part here, we're going to get cosine of 0, which will give us 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 1 over 1 plus 1. So to simplify this here, now we're just left with 2 in the numerator, 2 times 1 over 3 times 3. So the limit for question 3, as x approaches 0, will equal 2 ninths. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on evaluating trig limits. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.